Is this just a normal radio? I don't know. We, can Team style assault. we have a radio that works absolutely fine, but guess what? It's got a little hidden surprise. Hey Google, give me a weather report. Right now in Washington, not only does it have a built-in, not only does it have Today, a built-in Google cloudy, Home, with a forecasted high of 47 and a low of 31. <laughs> not only does it have a built-in Google Home, but check it out. I can unplug it. Hey Google, what time is it? It's 3:33 p.m. Look at this. It is completely battery operational as well. If you want to know how I got this thing put together, what I did, stay tuned for the following video. All right, hello everybody and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos on this channel because instead of being a fix it video, this is more of a create it video. So what you see in front of you is a, a plethora of things and the most notable one up here in the front is this Insignia uh, big speaker system. It's got a Google Home built in. Watch, okay Google. And you can see it lights up. What time is it? I understood. What time is it? Is that right? Yes. It's 1.12 p.m. I mean, I didn't need to ask that. It has a, temp or a time on the display as well as the temperature. But I uh, have one of these, and these are nice because they plug in, but you can also unplug them. There's a battery inside, and the charger's about six hours. And these things are great because it's uh, we'll have like people over outside, uh, and we'll just grab this, walk it out. It's hooked up to a speaker group, take it outside. It works for like six hours. These things are, are awesome. I love it. Um, we actually had two of them, if you can see that one behind it. It is in many, many pieces because it stopped working a while ago, I only brought this one up here to show what they actually are when they when they function. It stopped working a while ago. It actually seems to work just fine, but the microphone stopped recognizing any commands, so therefore you couldn't do much with it. I, you can actually force these things through your phone, through the Google Home app, tell it to like play something on a speaker, or if it's part of a speaker group, it'll play because everything works on it except the microphone won't pick up any of the the words to wake the thing up. And I'm not sure if it's that the microphones are bad or, and there's two microphones in there, I looked. I'm not sure if the microphone is bad or if it's just not recognizing a wake word correctly or, or what's really going on with it. Um, but even when you would play it through a speaker group, it would kind of like cut in and out all of a sudden. And so something clearly more major was going wrong with it. I originally made a, started to make a fix it video for this and realized I just don't understand this board enough. And uh, the, actually one of the boards on it, I'll show you when we get farther into this video, uh, there's a board that's up there. It's like glued into the top and I can't remove it. And that's so it's got the microphones on it. I'll show you a little bit later in the video, but I'm going to use that instead of just giving up on it and realizing I can't fix it and I don't know how to fix it. I'm going to try to use it for something else. My goal, I got this radio. This one was free from somebody on Craigslist. It's just a, a 1930, they advertise as a free 1933 radio. Uh, it's got a tape deck in it over here. It doesn't have tape decks in the 30s as far as I'm aware. I think this is just a brand that is meant to look like these old timey radios, uh, which I, I like. I actually like the style of this. I think it looks cool. Um, and it's plugged in right now. It actually works. And the America First Committee. Like, what was like NPR, it's got a tuning knob and everything there. Uh, you can hear it crackling speaker. though. So the America First Committee would do. So clearly like, It'd probably benefit to get into it and clean up some wires or clean up something and you fi figure out what it is to make it less crackly when you're like messing with the volume. But I f wanted, what I want to do is take that a step further and install a Google Home into this. I, it'd be nice if I could just use the Google Home from the broken one, but I don't know the, the, all the different circuit boards that are part of it. I'd have to somehow incorporate its own microphone and like... It's sad that the whole functionality of this thing works except for the microphone. And I can't figure out how to just replace the microphone, which is what I know many are going to say. Like, I just can't figure out how to do that. So I'm going to embed one of these Google Homes into it. This is Google Home Mini or Nest Mini or whatever you want to call them. I want to put this in there, but I want to do more than that. I want to make it so that the speaker that's part of this thing for one, see if I can make it better. Maybe you can use one of these speakers. Maybe they're a better speaker than what's in there. Uh, I don't even know how to tell what's a better speaker, but I want to open it up and have it be able to norm use this normally as the radio as it is, or have the Google Home hooked up to it, or both at the same time. I don't know if I can hook up two different outputs to the same speaker, and if you have them both on at the same time, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not an audiophile, so I don't understand all that stuff. But that's part of what I'm gonna try. I figured that'll be probably something easy, and that'd be fun, and you could hook it up, and I'll just have to wait, find a way to split the, the 110 signal coming in here over to a, uh, whether I put a different plug in there so the two different things can plug into it on the inside, or whether I can tap off of the circuit board that's in there. Maybe there's a five volt uh, rail in that circuit board that's in and that runs all this stuff. 
But then I thought even a step further, since this thing is basically dead to me, but it's got this nice battery feature. It's got its battery management and stuff built into it already that still seems to work since it's just a microphone problem. I peeled apart the battery from it. This has to stay with it though because you can't just plug one of these into something. It needs to have some battery management to know how to charge it, how to use it. I'm gonna try to remove the battery management part of this system and this battery and implement them all into this box with this Google Home so that hopefully at the end of the day, what I end up with is what looks just like this, still functions exactly like this, but with the added functionality of a Google Home inside and battery support. So I'm gonna kind of like mingle three of these things together and see what I come up with. So long explanation, that's the video. Let's get started. All right, so here we are. I know I said getting started, but obviously I've started a long time ago. I've had this thing apart multiple different times trying to really see if I could fix it because I really wanted to fix it. It just, it doesn't seem to be possible, but this is the uh, the unit. And if I pull it apart, you know, I've already got a lot of the screws out. You can see there's a couple of ribbon cables. One goes to the front display board over here. So let's quickly just, you know, just disconnect that. And the other one um, comes from this back main board. We're going to disconnect this as well. Whoops, that one all right, came off. Uh, in here, if you can see in there is where those circuit boards connect. There is, on the top of this, this is a whole touch screen system. You can't see it, but it's glued to the top because there are touch sensitive controls that are up here uh, that the, the board runs and the lights and stuff run. And the lights all work. And there's a hole here and a hole here. And I know you probably won't be able to read it. I have a picture of it somewhere. Maybe I'll try to throw into the video right here. Uh, but there's two, it's probably not even going to focus in there. So hopefully you can see the video in the video right now that there's two uh, mics on the sides. I think they're the mic, mic chips right here and over here. Uh, they say MIC right next to them, uh, MIC 301s next to each one. I used the product number off of it to even see because it looks like a surface mount type of mic, which I'm not very familiar with, and I couldn't even find it anywhere. But I, this board, there's no screws or anything in it. I could not pry it up for the life of me. I heated this thing up thinking it was a glue. I'm not sure if there's some, what kind of steel that they used on here, but I cannot get it off for the life of me. But honestly, this doesn't matter too much, I don't think, because on this board, which I've already pulled some things apart, as you can see, there's some, these were speakers connections that were connected into one into there, one into there, and one to there. There's three different speakers that are inside of here. Uh, this is a nice system. It's a really nice system. I, I wish it would, <laughs> would still work, but I'm trying to make out the best of what I can. The battery plugs in right here into this, into this spot and runs the whole system. And there's also the plug for the standard wall plug uh, right down here. And so my goal is to make it so I can just use power off of this board. Everything, I I'll, will still use the plug that's plugged into here so it can charge it whenever, and everything when it's plugged in, but when it's unplugged, it will hopefully use the battery power. I just need to find a good spot to tap into a, um, I'm assuming a five volt source for, oops, a five volt source for this guy. And I don't care if the radio itself <clears throat> can be used on battery or not. I just want the Google Home to be able to because that's what we use as a speaker anyway. I don't <laughs> really use radios that you can tune on and off. I just wanted to kind of do this and have it there and have it as part of the capabilities. <clears throat> so I need to find a good five volt source on this board. And it's interesting because, I don't know if you can, look, looking at this board closer, I'll just you know, set it down or hold it right here. It's a very intricate board, and I have not seen any very easy points in order to get five volts from. And what I want to do a lot of testing in is I need to make sure I pull from somewhere that doesn't use a source that, like, if you plug it in, I need to make sure that the voltage doesn't, like, jump around. So I can't just tap into, like, where the DC plug plugs in because the battery's probably not connected over there, and I can't just connect or do it to where the battery is plugged in because I bet this doesn't directly connect to there. I'm sure there's some type of charge management system in here and that's how the battery can work without like overcharging itself or, or never charging again. Like I don't want to explode a lithium ion battery when I do this, you know. So I need to do this carefully. I need to uh, peel around the, or feel around this board to figure out where I can do this from safely. And then the goal is to just take this whole board out and put it inside the radio. It's going to have a lot of other functionality that it's doing, but I'm not going to be utilizing, but I, I, that's, I think, the safest way to do this. Now, I will say, 
when I had this thing, I was trying to mess with it to see and have the ribbing cables plugged in and trying to measure some voltages across this board when I was trying to do anything with the microphone to see if anything was there. On battery power, it wasn't even plugged into the wall. I heard a pop. And I was like, well, this thing is fried. But the thing kept working. And I was like, that's odd. And I'm looking around and I didn't see anything on this board that looked bad. I'm going to pull off this shield. Um, then I found this capacitor had gone. Obviously, this capacitor blew. I don't know if it has anything to do with why the microphone's not working. I'm betting I shorted some things together because I had it all apart and the ribbing cables were a little bit loose. And I bet I, I shorted this. The crazy thing to me is that it still works. It didn't seem to change any functionality of this. So I don't know what this capacitor is to. This, I think I should probably do that first. I was trying to look up this speaker because uh, the original versions of them had a standard micro USB connector on them. These new Nest versions or whatever have their, their standardized, their, their proprietary barrel, con okay, not a proprietary connector, but they went away from a standard cable to this barrel connector. And uh, I actually realized that I don't know what the voltage is. I've been saying five volts without knowing that five volts is actually what I need to tap into for this because it could be like a 12 volt system. I doubt it. Uh, I tried to read this. It doesn't actually say anywhere on the plug, which I find a little annoying, but I also think that I can just use my new multimeter, put it to DC voltage, and let's see if we can get a reading here. I'm not sure the probes on this are long enough. You know, look at that. It is a 13 volt system. Uh huh. That might change my plans a little bit here. I wonder if I have any old Google Homes I should use instead that run off of 5 volts. Well, before we say that, let's see. Well, what's this battery? This battery is only a 7.4 volt battery. Ah. Uh, So my guess is I'm not going to have any 12 volt rails in the system. Let me rethink what unit I should use for this. All right, so some success and some failures to talk about for a minute. It's actually mainly successes. I did test this battery by taking some leads and connecting them to the power source of the the Nest Mini and it did power up even with only 8.5 volts or whatever that are in that battery even though it's a 12 volt system. Right now I'm trying to actually drain down the battery some more so I can for one make sure it'll still run this off of an even lower voltage as well as I'm trying to figure out what boards and everything need to be on the the old Insignia to run the run the battery management piece of it. So I need to drain it down enough to then plug it in with just the bare minimum, see if the battery starts to uh, to increase or not. And if it doesn't, I need to plug another board in and see if it starts to increase. I need to kind of troubleshoot and see what is my bare minimum I can leave out of there. Uh, this is my Google Home Mini, if you uh, hadn't noticed though, and it looks maybe a little bit different. Uh, these things are actually relatively easy to take apart. I just didn't know that at the time. I decided to just go full bore and try to figure it out and then started just breaking stuff to get to the posts. When really, if you look it up online, iFixit has great picture tutorial on how to do it, and there's many YouTube videos. There's just one screw that I couldn't find uh, that you have to unscrew, and then you twist it, and it comes apart. Um, <laughs> the screw, there was a piece here that you, you could lift the piece out of it, and then there's a screw underneath, and uh, yeah, that's gone. I kind of ate it all away, but that's fine. If if all if this works as planned, this will all be inside this radio over here that you can't see the side of me anyway. Um, so the important thing to note about this is, let me just open this up, disconnect this. This is the board where you plug in your power, uh, so I can get power from here and a switch for the mute button of the microphone. And then this is, the, the circuitry is all underneath this board here, right here. But the important part is this connector is for the speaker. So I can kind of leave most of this intact, which it looks like I have to anyway, because there's thermal paste involved in this. Uh, so I'm going to leave most of this intact and just be hopefully either hitting from here, connecting to the speaker that's in here, or in my radio, I'm going to zoom back out now so you can see, uh, the speaker that's in the radio, or using the speaker that was part of the Google Home 
and uh, replacing the radio speaker with it, or even replacing one of the old Insignia speakers with that one. It all depends on which one's the better speaker, uh, and I'm trying, I gotta figure out how to figure that out, but we can deal with that later. Since right now I'm waiting for this thing to discharge using the battery, and I've got the Google Home piece figured out that seems to be successful. Um, oh, and another, another thing I can show you later with the Insignia, that broken capacitor, while I was messing with all this stuff and tried just trying to get voltage to see where things were were at and how this battery was progressing, and I put my voltmeter across that the capacitor that's blown. It's actually a 12 volt rail right there, the positive and negative of the capacitor. The capacitor that doesn't like it exists, but it, it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything, which means there's a step up somewhere that's evening this all out to 12 volts. So I might have a perfectly usable 12 volt supply just where that capacitor used to be uh, that I can just pump into. Um, the Google Home Mini instead of relying on the battery directly or having to do a lower voltage from there. So I might be okay with that. But in the meantime, we still have to look into this guy right here because I need to see if this is running a fully 110 system, 110 volt AC system, or if there's an internal converter right in here because it might convert automatically into like 12 or five volts and I might be able to tap into that directly just solder to these other boards. Otherwise I have to get a system where I can have you know, a plug, multiple things plugged into it and converting. So let's see what we have in here. And we'll also have to see what room we have to work with anyway. And while I have nothing else to wait for, or nothing else to do while I wait right now, I mean, let's check it out. So this is a Divine brand, in case you wanted to know. Um, it doesn't have a model number on it, but it's a 1933 radio with cassette player in it. And as you heard, everything works. I haven't tested the cassette player actually, but I don't know if I have a cassette to test it with. You know what? I do. I have a Bare Naked Ladies yellow tape cassette. I'm not sure I'd want to use that in here in case it eats tapes because it's a rare tape that I have that I want to keep. But we'll see. Either way. All right. Look, so plenty of room in here to, uh, to mount things. Let me see if I can get this a better angle you can see. Upside down angle. Wow, this thing is, this thing looks ancient, actually. Uh, <laughs> obviously, the tape deck looks a little new. That circuit board looks like it's from the 30s. I mean, granted, I don't think they had circuit boards in the 30s, did they? Yeah, when was the first circuit board made? Uh, man, if only I had a Google sitting around here to ask. Um, but it's a 4 ohm, 3 watt speaker. Is that good? Is that bad? Is it was the dimensions? Which is about the same. I could, probably, I could get that to fit in the spot. I could get bigger ones. Um, I would say there's really good places to mount all these boards, but there's really not because the speaker takes up all this room right here. Uh, so I'll probably end up having to mount it to one of these walls. The walls are empty. But wow, that really does look like it's something from the 30s. One of the things I can mess with while I'm in here right now is I want to see if I can get the uh, I want to see if I can get the, the volume knob to not make it go squeaky squeaky. Every time it moves. I'm assuming all these components are not 120 volt AC components. I, I'm betting at some point there's a there's a bridge rectifier. Uh, I see a series of diodes over here. Um, I guess maybe I have to just find out by testing. It's really hard to work in this thing. Goes all the way. Oh wait, here we go. There is, uh, there's a transformer. Ugh. Oops. Uh, right there, there's a transformer. So, curious, if that's a 12 volt transformer, that actually is gonna make this job way easier because then I can just tap right into that 12 volt transformer. I don't have to do anything with the cord. We can still use the same cord to power everything. So let's, if I can see where that goes into the... So we might have some good news. It appears as if uh, that transformer is not an AC-DC transformer, but it's an AC-AC transformer, just a step-down transformer. So it's taking it from 110 volts, as far as I can tell, down to about 10 or 11 volts. So it's probably a... I don't know if it's, they sell 10 volts and it's just, you know... I don't know if they sell 10 volts and that's normal or if it's a 12 volt that's just not putting 10. But either way, that should be plenty of voltage for what we need. Um, and then next to it looks like the bridge, bridge rectifier on the board. I cannot for the life of me figure out where the the um, 
12 volts or the DC voltage is coming out from. I couldn't get any points and this tape deck is in the way. So what I've done is I've unscrewed it from the back and now I'm unscrewing it from, there we go, the front because that was holding it in to now see if I can carefully and gently lift this mechanism to the side. There we go. Okay, so now I've lifted it to the side and let me see if I can get an angle where you can see in there. And if you can see the transformers over here, it runs over to this side that says AC in and that's measuring 10 volts AC. I thought it was these two wires here that I'm pointing at, uh, but clearly it's not. Oh, I bet it's these two. There's a minus and a plus right there. I couldn't get to those ones because they were underneath the tape deck. So let me plug this back in, make sure this tape deck isn't touching anything since it is metal. Uh, let's see if we can turn it over. So it's just plastic touching anything. And it's got a hum to it though. I'm not sure I want that hum all the time. Like if I just utilize this thing as is, we'll just constantly have that hum no matter what because that's the nature of, of how this works. So let me see my DC voltage. Let me see this plus and minus is. It's not that. Oh, it's off right now. Uh, should have been off matter in this juncture. Let me see if I'm getting AC voltage to the bridge rectifier. I am getting AC voltage to the bridge rectifier. Oh, you probably can't see that. Uh, zoom out. See this and please hold. So there's, you saw the voltage coming in, AC voltage coming in. I'm measuring on the AC inlines and you can see it's 10.94. Um, I don't think it then goes to a switch before it gets to the bridge rectifier. So there's got to be a DC output voltage that I'm just missing on here somewhere. Okay, so I found a place where I can finally get positive and negative voltage. It took a while because I thought it was this positive and this negative that's marked up right there, but that's actually going to the speaker. Uh, but it turns out that right around where it says AC in right here, there's two depressed holes that aren't populated with anything. That's actually where DC positive and DC negative is. I just etched into the board a little bit for a plus and a minus. Uh, this is underneath the tape drive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, while I have the tape drive disconnected, I'm gonna clean up the speakers, pour some IPA in there, scrub it with a brush, and uh, put some wires onto the plus and minus parts there so that I can, because uh, I won't be able to get to it afterwards. So I'll do that while we're still letting this battery drain in the other unit. So I ended up having to take the board out anyway because when I went to try to solder onto that ground plane, it just punctured right on through and I couldn't figure out why. Uh, it just turns out these are solder plates, I guess you could call them. And when I put my soldering tip on it, it just went down. So I had to get it out anyway so I can actually make a connection onto these, which is fine. Uh, but I took the time to clean all these on the, this side of it as well. I don't know if you noticed though, but this is the... Uh, I don't know how much, clo how much closer I can get with this. This is the tuning dial and it's funny because it's just connected to this potentiometer the way it works is there's just a rubber band wrapped around so it's, it's working like a um uh, a rubber grommet in a in a cassette player or whatever but it just it just looks kind of funny because that's that's all it is it's just you, you twist this thing and it twists the the rubber band so therefore it spins the dial so i thought i'd show that off and i will get the wires connected to this put this back in and uh be back with you soon so I still have to put the tape deck in, but as you can see, it worked out actually a lot better to do it that way because now I got a nice connection. I put the wires through a through hole and soldered them in on the back side. So they are nice and strong. Um, now I just need to check and make sure we actually have the 12 volts we're expecting there. I have to turn it down to do that. Zoom out because you can't see in there anyway. Get my multimeter in view and voltage AC, or excuse me, voltage DC. All right. Ooh, I should have made sure they weren't touching each other. Luckily they're not <laughs> because I just plugged it in. So I am now, I've also got rid of the hum noise. So let's get, this new multimeter I got has these little teeny, teeny probe ends. I'll show you in a minute. 
There we go. We're actually getting 13 volts uh, out of this. So it must be a 14 volt transformer or a 12 volt transformer that's overperforming. Uh, I'm not really sure, but we're getting 13 volts out of this, which is perfect. If I didn't say the Insignia's plug is actually a 12 volt plug as well, uh, I think the actually the Insignia and the Google Home plugs are interchangeable because of the same barrel style and they're the same voltage. So I bet they're interchangeable. Uh, but this will work for all the equipment, which is great. So we are on track for what we need to do. I just need to now get the cassette player put back in this thing. So this thing is not closed up because I got to put all the boards in it, but this thing is ready for connections and we have a working functional uh, unit. All right, so this battery has discharged enough that the unit turned off and I believe I measured it to be 7.39 volts. It's hard to get my probes on here. 7.39 volts uh, R1 is in here, so it no longer runs the old Insignia. However, I did actually connect it. I can show you that now if you want to see. I connected it to the uh, Google Home Mini, and it still actually runs that. It's enough juice for that. Uh, but So that's interesting to note that even though it's a 12-volt supply, it's running off of less than 7.5. But I'm going to show you that by... Move this out of the way. I just put some leads into here, and I'm connecting them to the positive and negative spot on this board. As you can see, still lights that up. So the battery is going to be enough for us, but now the whole point of discharging it was to try to remove as many components off of this board as possible. So I'm gonna take this shield out that I believe is the Wi-Fi shield. I'm actually gonna take off the front display as well because my whole goal on this is to only be able to have this one board if possible, you know, with this broken capacitor and everything. Uh, so let me get this plugged in. And already the original power cord for it, but let's get the battery plugged back in. And we'll plug the whole device in. And in theory, I probably won't see any lights because I think the lights on this board are controlled through the Wi-Fi board as well, which is what makes me wonder. There we go. Oh no, I guess we do have a light. We have a red light on here, which is fine. I just now need to see if after letting this, this sit for a while, if the battery is gaining voltage. If the battery is gaining voltage, that's all I need to see. Uh, and then we're going to be good to go. All right. Couple hours have passed, moment of truth. Let's unplug this. Test the battery out of circuit. It's way easier to do. And we will see if this thing has gained the voltage. Seven point nine five? That is significantly up in the 7.39 it started at. Uh, I bet you this thing now, this would be another test. Plug this in. Ugh. Will this even actually just start up? Actually, probably not, because I don't think it actually starts without boards connected. But this will be a good test on if the battery is actually charging appropriately. That's on. There we go. Blinking white light is on here, which means the battery has charged uh, because it's, it didn't used to run this and now it does. So that means without the boards, uh, I can just use this base back board right here for at least the charging part of the circuit. Now we just need to do some digging onto this board and find out where I have a 12 volt supply because I don't have the one I originally thought I had. And then we can remove this and start working. Okay, here's the board. I've actually removed that faulty capacitor just to get it out of the way. Uh, turns out the other capacitor, the one that's up, up here, the back of it right here seems to give a steady 12 volt supply at all times. Uh, battery plugged in or uh, power cord plugged in or both. So that's what I'm gonna go with for my power. And then I gotta have input power coming from where the plug, the barrel plug would normally be right here. There's a, uh, most of these are 
is a big ground plane, most of them, not quite all of them, but I gotta get, tap into like this one right here, and then this test point here is where my normal positive would be. And if you're wondering, why do I have to find different power inputs since I already have a 12 volt system coming from the radio itself? Well, the 12 volt system from the radio itself has to power this board, so it's acting as if this board was plugged in, and then this board has to, the output power from it has to go to the Google Home in order to allow for the battery to work on the Google Home. So that's why I have to do it this way uh, and not just, otherwise I could just connect the 12 volt system I already have to uh, straight up to the Google Home and that'll work. It just won't do the battery component that I'm looking for. Um, so from here, I have to do my output to my Google Home, which is, I'm having problems understanding direction. There we go. Uh, I need to make it go to two points in here that I have identified as the, uh, the power points that are the source. So I'm gonna make these connections here and be ready to put this all into place, into the, uh, into the radio. Okay, so finished up all, all that wiring and everything seems to be working fine externally. Now we got a couple more things to do. One, I need to test it in the radio itself. I put the barrel connectors, the opposite barrel connectors on the wires we uh, put together earlier. So let's just very quickly plug these in. I don't like these barrel connectors very much. Um, once I get this finalized and I might permanently actually just put these in the way they're supposed to be, but okay, they are connected. And when I power this up, we should see this guy come to life, uh, the Google Home. So let's turn it so, oh, oh it's on right now. Uh, hold on, let's disconnect it because the battery was connected. But this should be more of a real life example of how this is going to work. So I'm gonna plug the battery back in now. And as we know, when I plug the battery in, for the first time, it's not what powers the system up, but the plug does. So you can see nothing happening on the Google Home. Let's very carefully unplug that. Here we go. Power is happening. And now when I unplug the radio, it should stay on. And it did, because now it's running off of battery power. And clearly if I just turn the radio on, there's nothing, no sound, nothing. But if I, actually, let me just turn it up. It's really loud. Here. I'm not getting sound from the radio. I didn't see a light turn on either. Uh, interesting. So something, I need to troubleshoot some steps of things I did yesterday it looks like because we're getting power, yeah we're getting power through the radio in order to turn this on. Let me make sure that wasn't a fluke. So let's unplug everything. So that's unplugged. That, in theory, I just don't even want to plug the battery in. Um, when I plug this in, I should get power to the Google Home. Let's confirm. So that's true. So that means the transformer is still working. It's going to the board. The board is outputting the DC voltage where I'm picking it up from, but it's not running. I'm sure I just disconnected something. I'm gonna have to probably tear this thing back apart and look through it. But while I'm in there, I'm probably gonna make some extra connections to the speaker because the other thing we need to test is a speaker. And I need to look at a couple things while I'm in here because the speaker takes up a lot of space in there, as you can see. There's gonna to need to be a place where the Google Home needs to sit somewhere up in this area so that the microphone can recognize it because otherwise if he's close this thing off, you'll have to scream at it probably if there's no way it can get through like the mesh or whatever. And I'm wondering if 
the mesh on the front is seems to be much bigger than the than where the speaker hole is. I wonder if I can take this piece out, which I might do if I have to take the board all the way out anyway, um, and cut another hole somewhere to the side where this might eventually be able to sit, and even make the lights maybe display on it somewhere so you can actually see the lights from the front uh, through the just like through the grill. I think that would be really cool if you say, okay, Google, and it's like, doo -doo -doo, and starts like lighting up right there. That would probably be pretty cool. Um, so I might look at that when I have this thing apart and the circuit board's out of here again, but I gotta troubleshoot why it's not working at all anymore. Okay, I found the problem, and it all seems to be with this potentiometer. This is the potentiometer right here that I'm turning from the back. You can see it turning on this side. This is the off position. This is on, and then it goes through the range of volume. And it seems to send out a signal anywhere between zero and 14 volts approximately uh, when it when you get to the high end of the potentiometer. When it's off, I don't know how well you can see because it's small, there's this little gate that it lifts up basically. And then when you close it, or when you turn it back on, it makes a connection, it drops down, it makes a connection. Clearly something in here, it's not making the connection like it's supposed to. I can force it into a connection. I don't want to get the music going. And it works for a minute, but it's not going to turn it off again and then turn it back on. It's, again, not making the connection it's supposed to make. I think I'm just going to clean it, let it sit, maybe get a, a hard bristle brush and try to scrape it because there's a lot of corrosion there. I'm hoping that's all that this problem is. Okay, so update. System's working fine again. Uh, I did test the speakers and realized... Uh, through trial and trial and error and then doing some research that you cannot use the same source or two different sources for the same speaker. It will not work. And I'll tell you, it did not work. It made crackling sounds and just things were not working at all. Um, I tried with both this speaker and with this, this speaker that came with the original Nest Mini uh, to see if I, it was just a speaker issue. Um, online forums started talking about why you can't do it, something with impedance and blah, blah, blah. I'm just not an audio person, so I didn't like I didn't delve down that rabbit hole any deeper. I just got confirmation that, oh, it doesn't work. So I'm stuck using two speakers, which is fine, but I do need to try to make room, so make room for everything to fit the way I need it to do. So in this case, I'm gonna have to move it so this one speaker is somewhere, somewhere on here. This Google Nest speaker, which is the one I'm gonna use, the mini speaker, is gonna be the one that actually controls the mini. So it's gonna be something like this uh, and then I need to still make room to get this somewhere on here where it's going to be able to see the lights through through here and have the microphone work. So right now I'm just trying to figure out how I need to position everything and hopefully it's all going to fit and I can make that happen. So that's what I have to do next. If you'll notice there's holes. So this thing is just, apparently it's just this uh, this mesh that you see in the front through the uh, through the pattern, which I can't lift this up right now because the circuit boards are everywhere. It's just one flat piece of, of the mesh on top of this board. So what I need to do is I need to find out where I'm gonna put all the speakers, drill holes in this, like peel it back a little bit, drill some holes so that the speaker sound will actually come through and make a little cutout in it for the, uh, the Nest Mini. So let me get to trying to get some measurements, see if I can make this thing work and hopefully join you in. I have those pieces affixed to this board and back in the unit. Okay, so I got a layout that I think will work. I uh, went and drilled some holes for the speaker and one for the light. Unfortunately, there's a little snafu and I, uh, they, I was trying to peel this thing back in the corner of my jigsaw caught the carpet here, the the whatever you call this, the, the finish on the top. So there's a little hole in it and I'm trying to kind of pull it together and I don't know. I hope it doesn't detract from it too much, but hey, it is what it is now. Now I'm just gonna start to put things inside of here and uh, probably just hot glue things in and see if I can get them to fit and go together and we'll see where we're at. All right, so there is my Google Home speaker. There is the speaker for the radio. There is the rest of the Google Home, the brains of the operation. I actually detached that little board that was connected with the ribbon cable from this piece and I just double-sided taped it to uh, this shell and then I put that the piece of the shell with the thermal paste back into place for heat. And then I've got the board from the original Insignia with the battery management system here. I'm going to get the battery connected to here eventually. Let's uh, oh, go ahead and do a test to make sure the radio is functional right now before I go any farther. Richard, 
Radio is working just fine, which is awesome. I did notice that the light on the display does not seem to function. I actually don't know if it functioned before. I mean, granted, it's not even in the display spot right now. It is, uh, uh, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I could replace it with a different LED and then put it in there, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. So I'm not that concerned. So right now what I need to do is I'm going to now make this permanent. I'm going to take out these barrel connectors and actually just solder the power straight to where it's supposed to be. I need to connect the Google Home Mini speaker wire, which is here is coming from the Google Home, and here is coming from the actual place on the board. I gotta put these to solder these together, put the battery in here. I, I, I think that will complete this project. So let's finish this up. Okay, and finally, the battery. Some double sided tape on this guy. Actually, unplug. All right. Plug it in. And in theory, this, can't, can't turn my camera, this is complete. Now, I did go ahead and change the light anyway. Uh, I needed to do some experimentation to uh, realize that I needed a resistor on it too, because the 10 amp, or the 10 volts was uh, uh, too much for it. I don't know what these are rated at, they just came in a kit. Um, so, 20K ohm resistor. Seems to make it work at the brightness level that I wanted, so it's kind of closer. It's a white LED, but it's you know kind of a little bit uh, a little bit more drastic than what was in there before, but whatever. So now just clean it up a little bit of stuff. Let's zoom out. Let's see. Let's turn it around before I close her all up. Yeah, unfortunately, that little tear is pretty noticeable, which is my fault, completely my fault. But I can live with that. So let's. Moment of truth here. Power. You see that? The Google Home part is working. Let's get. You know, I spent time just being on traveling around doing nothing. That's Russ. It seems really to be working place. fine. I don't know why my Google in the background is doing something weird. Um, but anyways, we should hear a noise in a minute. Uh-oh. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. What time is it? It's 2.23 p.m. Something's wrong with the speaker in there. I, th I bet you just came disconnected. Uh, this is why we test things before we put them all together, though. Meeting, and this meeting will okay, so this is very strange. Um, it's something I was not expecting. I think I'm gonna have to actually change part of the setup. Starting at 1 p.m. Hey Google, pause. There, it took a while. Um, so what's happening is. The static was happening, I redid all the connections for the speaker wire and everything was fine. Uh, or I, it kept happening and I was like, I don't understand what's going on. I unplugged the radio and all of a sudden it started working perfectly clear. And I replugged the radio back in and it worked perfectly clear for a minute, but the second I powered cycled the volume, it went out. Again, it went back to that nasty sound. Let me see if I can get it to happen. Hey Google, play forest sounds. So, got volume happening. Sounds clear. I know it's not anything crazy. Plug this in. The second power takes over, it has an issue. I did also find out if I unplug the battery, it's fine for a minute. Yeah. But when I plug the battery back in, it'll work for now without any problem. But if I cycle, what? the second I turn the, the power to the radio on, all of a sudden it cuts out. So, I think what's happening, this is just a guess, the transformer 
is in some way interfering with the power delivery because I am stealing power straight from the main board. So I think in order to alleviate this, what I'm gonna have to do is put like a power splitter in here instead of using the, uh, the power from this board itself. I'm just going to have to actually put the plug that came with this into here, plugged into something, tap in off of the, uh, the AC power line and actually plug it in like it normally would be plugged in and disconnect the, the power connections from the board. Um, okay, I think I found the solution that is going to work. So I have this from a previous project. It actually used to charge a jump box that I, uh, that I had. It plugged into the back of the, the jumper box. This end had a wall plug on it and I took it off in the past when I was doing some other work. Uh, but this is a perfect receptacle for an outlet. And it's the exact same gauge cord as this, as, as well as this is a low uh, amperage supply that I'm going to be doing over to the uh, to the insignia and things like that. So this should be absolutely fine. I just need to get down to this transformer, splice into where the mains voltage comes in, splice it into this, situate all this in the box, and hopefully that will solve the problem. So let me get to work. So it should be good size. Disconnect, separate these, make some. Those are going to be instead of that. Those are going to go inside. Okay. Now. Pending. No immediate explosions. Let's test a couple things. Okay. Testing time. Turning this on, or plugging this in. Okay, nothing has exploded. Oh, I forgot. I got. I still got a heat shrink and a resolder the the speaker connections, but we can do that in just a second. Continue to rise in Kosovo between the and radio itself still works as normal. Now, uh, oh, I can't really tell. I got. I got to plug this in to the board. Luckily, where I mounted the board, there is room to plug it in. Okay, plugged in. What we should see is. Get the power up. We got power on that. So that's good. They're working independently as well because it's just taking the mains voltage. It's not taking anything off of the board anymore. So we should hear the sound coming on soon when the Google Home boots up. And once we do that, I will have it start playing something. I'm gonna plug the battery back in, try a bunch of different combinations of things and, uh, and see what actually happens. Speaker actually sounds good. Hey Google, play forest sounds. Okay, so that's playing. I'm gonna plug the battery back in. The battery is plugged in. But everything still sounds fine. I'm gonna turn the radio on and off. It shouldn't affect anything. Did not affect anything. I should be able to unplug this and it should still go. Got much quieter, but... It seems the volume changes a little bit as you, uh, um, was it switches from battery to to not, which is fine. I mean, if it changes slightly. Um, but I think I've solved the problem that I had. Now I gotta tuck, get the speaker wires, resolder together, tuck everything away, put the back cover on. You can, see, you can hear the volume just came back up. I'm sure it's because it's, the battery is like charging. Okay, let us uh, let me see if I can get this thing buttoned up. All right, so before I close it up, this is what we ended up with. I double-sided taped the like, an angle this plug over here, uh, so it's 
hooked against the wall. I tried to route the cables as much as well as I could around the cassette player, which we don't even know if it works or not, but just to make sure it didn't nothing interfered over there. Um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I think this will do the job and tucked everything out of the way kind of nicely. Over here in the corner, you can see the circuit board. I've got the, uh, the extra cable just bunched up and rubber banded and plugged in there. And one more test before we close this thing up. We're going to plug it in, make sure everything is working as expected, and then close it up. And Google Home is still going, so the light flash I think was fine. Uh, Radio still works. I'm pretty sure the red light indicates whether it's charging at the time or not, and I think the battery's full because I, I've had, let, been letting it charge, so I'm betting that's what that's about. Waiting to hear the Google Home sounds though. Hey Google, what time is it? It's 3.17 p.m. Sounded good. Let me uh, get the back sealed up and show this thing in its full glory. And finally at last, here we are. Finished product. We are plugged in. The Radio works absolutely fine. Hey Google, play forest sounds. That's working. Turn the sound on. Turn it off. Got nothing interfering. And now the ultimate. Let's take the plug. We unplug it. Change volume a little bit, but you can still hear it playing in there. Hey Google, what time is it? It's 3.31 p.m. So while it didn't go exactly as planned, uh, there was a lot of changes that I made throughout the way. It was a fun learning experience, and it's, we kind of have an all-in-one unit now that has battery power, which is what I wanted, incorporates a Google Home, and keeps the radio functionality still functional. Granted, the radio does not work with uh, without it plugged in because I didn't hook up that to the side of the circuit. I also wasn't expecting to have to redo the power distribution at the very end there. I wanted to really tap into the board uh, and use the power from the existing radio, but hey, if this is the way I have to do it, this is the way I have to do it. Now I'm just gonna let this thing Stay on for a while, see how long this battery kind of lasts. I don't know if I can really tell how long it lasts, but make sure it discharges all the way, turns off and plug it in, make sure it recharges and uh, yeah. But thanks for watching. This was a, a pretty cool experience and I, I hope you guys enjoyed as much as I enjoyed doing this. Uh, there was a lot of boring parts in the video, I'm sure, but we'll see how I edit it together to make it look super exciting at every step of the way. But again, thanks for watching this episode uh, of, like I said, not a fix it video, but more of a, a build it or create it video. Um, just something different and fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.